Hello and welcome back to this European School Net Academy Games in Schools course. This is module 5 where we're talking about designing games um, and in this short module we're going to be talking about games design for younger children and the first uh, program that we're going to look, look at is we're going to be looking at MIT's Scratch um, which is over 10 years old now and it's a visual programming language and for me it has completely revolutionized the way um, that young people are uh, able to be introduced into, into, into coding activities um, and it's made it a lot more accessible. Um, this is an example here of a, of a scratch screen. Uh, you can see that down the left hand side of the screen we've got these different blocks. They work a little bit like Lego blocks. You drag them over to the uh, to the middle part of the screen and uh, depending on the order that you put these blocks in or the information and then the information that you put into these blocks um, this this controls what happens on the right hand side of the screen which is where we've got our characters our backgrounds and our sprites now the important thing about the scratch programming language is that it's a it's a visual programming language but it's also a visual programming language and online community and the online community is a really important part um, of Scratch because that's where young people can share their creations but it's also where they can get mutual support from other people um, as well. Um, in terms of the, the Scratch programming language there are lots of things that you can do um, but the most recent version of Scratch was introduced in, in January uh, 2019, Scratch 3.0 and it's introduced a whole wide range of new extensions, uh, a new sound recording tool, better ways for young people to be able to develop their own drawings, um, as well as the ability to be able to import drawings and sprites like before. So we're going to watch a short video which shows some of the new features of Scratch 3.0. So just loads of great and amazing features as part of Scratch 3.0 and I would really encourage you to check out uh, Scratch 3.0 if you've not had a chance to play with Scratch for a while. Um, remember the whole point behind Games Course is not to give you step-by-step -step instructions about how to make games or how to use games but to offer you with a suite of ideas so that you can decide how you might want to use computer games in the classroom. Um, so we're not going to talk through how you use Scratch in detail, but we are going to introduce you now to some resources on the Scratch website um, which you might find useful to get you started to use um, game design in your classroom. Uh, the first one is around um, the explore function. One of the great things about Scratch is that you can look at everybody else's projects. In fact, you can even take somebody else's project and turn it into your own and you can iterate on it um, because everything is licensed under Creative Commons um, and it's share and share alike. Um, there's a few new features of the Scratch website that were launched along with Scratch 3.0. Um, one of them is around uh, scratch.mit.edu forward slash ideas. And these are tutorials, tutorials to get you started using Scratch. Um, and if you've never used Scratch before, I would encourage you to try the getting started tutorial. It just gets you started introducing a basic sprite um, and, and then just trying to animate the sprite. And then once you've got the basics, you can start to introduce more complicated blocks or more complicated variables um, to, to get started with your, with your game or your animation um, or your story. There's also a really, really nice set of um, Scratch activity cards. You can buy these physically, but they're all available as PDFs on the website as well. Um, and this introduces you to some nice little, uh, you know, uh, coding activities um, around animating your name, animating a character, making music, all of which are incredibly playful um, by nature. And as I said before, you can download all of these uh, coding cards for free, um, or you can order a physical set on Amazon as well. There's also a new part of the website, which is starter projects. 
Um, so these are projects that uh, just just start to get you thinking about what you can do, and you can. And the idea behind this is that you you take a project and you turn it into your own. Um, you know, so for example, you take a product uh, that's already been created by somebody else, and you decide to change the character or the way that the game scores. Um, so really, really interesting way to get things started. And in fact, there's also a whole creative computing curriculum. Which is which is available on on Scratch Ed, um, which is uh, part of the Harvard Sc School Graduate of Education, and we will put all of these the links to all of these resources onto the online community for you to experiment with. Um, and the final thing that I wanted to mention in terms of Scratch is that there's a thing that's called Scratch Day. Scratch Day is normally celebrated in May, but actually you can have a Scratch Day at any day of the year. It's kind of completely up to you. Uh, and the idea behind Scratch Day is this is about kind of creative coding. This is what pulls people together with learning through play with technology. Um, and you come together um, to, to celebrate Scratch projects that you've created either as part of the day um, or in the build up to the day. And if your school has not participated in Scratch Day before, I would really encourage you to get involved because, again, it gives you a, you know, a, you know, a context for launching some of your coding work. So the next uh, game design tool that we're going to have a look at is we're going to have a look at Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft is incredibly uh, popular, both in its consumer version, but also increasingly with its education version as well. So here's it's a it's a it's a sandbox game where you can create and you can do whatever you want. Uh, if you've not heard of Minecraft before, it's probably unlikely, but you might not have played Minecraft before. And this little video will give you an introduction to what Minecraft is like. We gave you a world, a world where you could simply create a block and destroy it. A world where the only limit is your imagination. And you taught yourselves how to build funny, creative, bombastic, epic, unexpected, and amazing things. And you took it even further into the world of education. So the question is, can Minecraft help us to understand mathematics, history, how to communicate, collaborate to solve problems, and much, much more? You've shown us it can. The first steps have been taken, and now we invite you to show us how Minecraft inspires you to change the way we learn. Okay, so a massive amount of potential for Minecraft in the classroom um, to help young people uh, be creative, um, but also introduce them to the domain of computer games design. Um, and as the video hints at, there's not just the commercial version of Minecraft now, there's also the education version of Minecraft. Um, it's not open source, uh, unlike Scratch, um, which means that you, you have to have, have paid for it. Um, however, there are many uh, regions and education authorities uh, and school districts that have bought into the Minecraft Education Edition as part of their uh, relationship with, with Microsoft. It's worth checking out to see whether you're entitled to use it or not. Um, as I've mentioned already, lots of great potential for education. And also, as I've mentioned already, the purpose of this is not to go through a Minecraft tutorial but to flag up some resources that might help you start to think about how you could use Minecraft in your classroom. Um, and there are as obvious things around the creating of, of content, but also exploring other people's content as well. Uh, a great place to start to get some ideas for using Minecraft is actually the Minecraft Wiki, um, which is part of Gamerpedia.com. Um, it's a it's a crowdsourced wiki, um, and there's loads of great stuff on there about using Minecraft in the classroom. Uh, and also, because now Minecraft is owned by by Microsoft, uh, Microsoft have invested a huge amount of resources in developing resources on how to use Minecraft for educators. Um, and if you've not come across the Microsoft Education Educator Community, you might want to, to check that out. And if you're a member of the Educator Community, which is free, you can search for Minecraft and there are a number of different courses that you can take part in. Um, and as you will see, which links in very, very nicely with last uh, week's unit, you can also gain digital badges and gain experience points for, for taking part in these courses. So Minecraft, definitely worth checking out and having a look at. So that's the end of the a very brief introduction to two game design tools for younger children. 
we've looked briefly at Minecraft EDU and we've looked at Scratch. Um, and your challenge really is to, to go away and to visit one or both of the websites around that um, and just have an explore of some of the resources and the tutorials that are available there for free uh, and for you to decide whether you think there might be relevance in using one or both of these tools in your classroom. Okay, look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll be talking a little bit more about advanced game design tools.